This is the first part of the copper etch video and this is where we're going to be producing the copper sheet we're going to be putting our etching on. Now the first thing we need to do is to create a new document. We can do that by going to File, New, we're going to come across to Blank File, Command N or Control N is the shortcut. Now the document type I'm going to be using is clicking down, we're going to go to International Paper and the size we're going to be using is going to be A3. Background color is going to be white. We're going to click on OK. Now this is in the portrait format. The idea I've got is uh, on the landscape format. So we're going to go up to image, rotate, tough decision. Do we go left? Do we go right? I'm going to go for right. And there it is. Do you think I should have gone for left? We'll leave it as it is. Right, let's put it to fit on screen. We're going to use command zero, control zero. That's command zero, control zero to go to fit on screen. Now we're going to duplicate this background layer and we're going to do that using the shortcut, which is command J or control J. That's command J, control J to duplicate the background layer. I'm now going to fill this layer with black just to make it a little bit easier so we can see what's going on. So picking up the pots and dropping in, there's our black layer picking up my hand tool. We're now going to reduce this down in size. So we're going to go back to the image menu. This time I'm going to transform, free transform, command T or control T is the shortcut. But while we're here, just make a note of these menu items. Right, now when the transform tool has been applied, bring your cursor inside. Notice the way it changes to a black arrowhead. Right click again. Now look at these menu items. Well, the one we're going to be using is scale. So if I come to the top corner grab handle, clicking down, we can reduce it down in size because we're using scale, it's keeping everything in the correct proportions. Bringing it up, I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller again. So just reducing it down like that. And there it is. Double click into apply, or we can go to the bottom right hand corner, click on the little green tick. Now the next thing we need to do, and this is very important, is we need to put a selection around our layer one. Now we can do that by coming over to the layers panel, bring your cursor over the thumbnail, press and hold down command or control. Notice the way you get a little square on the back of your hand. That's gonna put a selection in and there it is. Now the reason for the selection is I want to keep all of the effects just on this layer. If you don't put a selection in, the effects we apply will come right over the edge. So let's go down to our gradient tool. Let's go down to tool options. We're going to use the gradient editor. So clicking on the gradient editor and no surprises, we're going to use copper, but we are going to edit this. For example, I think going to a lighter color there is just uh, not gonna work. So we're gonna click on the color stop. We're now gonna go down to the bin. We're going to get rid of it. Let's come to this color stop. I want to move this across to the right hand side. Now I can click on this. I can move it across, but probably the safer way is bring your cursor over the word location. Notice the way it changes. You get a hand with a double arrow head. You can move it left or right. I'm going to take it to the right. Looking pretty good at 100. Let's click on the midpoint one there. Once again, coming down to location, we're going to take it to 30, going to put it right in the middle. So we're going to move that to 50. There will do nicely. Bringing my cursor up, I'm going to click on this color point. What I want to do now is I want to move this across. Just want to bring some of the lighter tones into this area. So once again, just clicking down, moving it over there. That looks pretty good. Right, we can also save this as a preset. The name, I'm going to call it My Copper. Yes, I know it's imaginative, but we're going to click on Add to Preset. There it is. Let's click on OK. Let's just drop this down out of the way. Now, bringing my cursor out for the gradient tool, I'm going to click down, but I'm also going to hold down Shift. Why am I holding down Shift? If I release Shift, you get a bit of a wonky line. Hold Shift. You keep it nice and horizontal. So holding down shift, taking it to the edge there, releasing it. There is the copper effect. Now I want to give the copper sheet here a little bit of a brushed finish. So let's come up to filter. We're going to go down to noise. We're going to come across to add noise. And I'm using the amount of 12.03. Well, it can be 12 there. It doesn't have to be the 03. Uniform. And we're using, this is the important thing here, monochromatic. If I click down, there's the before. There's the after. Let's take it to a slightly darker tone there. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good like that. We're going to click on OK. So there's the noise. Now for the brush effect. So we're going to go to Filter, Blur. We're going to go to Motion Blur. And we're going to blur it to angle we've set to zero. Just taking it to the darker tones just enables us to see a little bit clearer. There looks pretty good. Distance we got 24. I like that. So we're going to click on OK. Right. We can now come up to Select. Deselect Command D, Control D is the shortcut. We can remove that selection. Now to give this a little bit of a, more of an edge to it and also a little bit of separation from the background here, let's go down to Styles. Now with Styles, we've got Patterns. I'm going to scroll up to Bevel. Let's use this one here, which is Simple Sharp Inner. Clicking on that, it is simple, it is sharp, and it is inner. Let's click on the little gear cog here. I'm just going to reduce the size down. The size is the thickness of that bevel. I'm going to drop it down into this sort of area there. That looks good like that. That is 18 pixels. Let's click on OK. Back to the flyout menu. This time we're going to go down to drop shadow, and I'm going to come across to high. Clicking on high and Going up to the little gear cog. Incidentally, if you're using an older version of uh, Photoshop Elements, you have to edit this on the other side when we go back into layers. I'll show you that in just a moment. But bringing my cursor out, you'll notice it is now the Move tool. We can now move that into position, something like this, and we can now click on OK. Let's go back to Layers. And as I said, you can edit it if you're using an older version, or if you want to change it now, you can just double click on the effects. There it is. I'm just going to drop that down very, very slightly into that area. That looks pretty good. We're now going to click on OK. This is where you can edit the bevel as well, should you want to. Right, clicking on OK. How about the background? Let's click on the background layer. Notice it is called background. Notice it's got little padlock on it as well. Right, let's go back to styles. Let's come to the drop down menu. Let us go to patterns. Now with patterns, I'm going to come down to oak. Clicking on oak, it is saying styles can only be applied to a layer. Do you want to make this background a layer? Well, yes we do. So I'm going to click on OK. Now this is where it gives us the option to rename it. It is calling it layer zero as default, but I'm going to call this wood because that's what it's going to become. We're going to click on OK and there it is. It has become wood. Let's go to layer. Now notice it is called wood. That padlock has gone. We have now got an effects showing us that a layer style has been applied to it. So there it is. There is the first part. There is our copper sheet with our nice wooden background. All we need to do now is apply an etch effect to it. We're going to do that in the second part of this video. So I hope you'll join me for that.